Attention, white people. Just shut up. Just shut up. G'day, you good motherfuckers. The Butts Barn here. Hope you're doing real well. And uh, this video is... It's a problem. It's a real, real issue. It's racism. It's reverse racism. And particularly since the Queen passed away. God rest. Her lizard soul. If you don't know the Queen, she's uh, Prince Andrew, the guy who was hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein on his island and everyone forgot about that even though he walked down the street and everyone's just looking at him going, oh, look at him, he's so sad, his mummy died. Yeah, hung out with fucking Epstein and then settled a case for like 16 million pounds. Anyway, out of court. So we don't get to find out about it. Anyway, that guy, his mum, she passed away. Don't know if you knew about it. The topic of racism and colonialism was rife throughout the internet and through print media and on the TV. The history of colonialism is without a doubt horrifying, all right? I'm glad, this is a weird thing to say, but I'm glad that England came to Australia and took it for theirs. Why? Even though it was a bit fucked up and a bit steely. I mean, they did it all over the world. That's just fucking, it's just what happens. But if, if that never happened, I wouldn't be here. So obviously I'm pretty happy about that. All right, I'm very happy about that. <laughs> I'm not happy with the way they did it, sure. There are already people living here, but it is what it is, all right? We can't blame the people that are alive today for that. We can blame the pricks that did it prior to us even being, not even being born, but being within 200 years of being born. Since the Queen's passing, the topic of colonialism and racism is rife throughout the internet. Many people were really happy that this white monarch was dead. As it turns out, her ancestors were pretty bad people, much like a lot of people back in the day, didn't really give a fuck about human life. And maybe she did some shitty things to people who weren't white in her lifetime as well. But we must remember, she was born 96 years ago, the world was a very different fucking place. I'd argue that she amended those faults over time, except for of course, you know, killing Princess Diana, um, <laughs> because she had an Egyptian Muslim as a boyfriend and she was potentially pregnant and then the Egyptian Muslim would be a part of the royal family and a whole thing. And then there's the whole Meghan Markle being a bit too brown. Of course, these are jokes. I don't mean this and I hope the royal family doesn't sue me or take me into a French tunnel. But with the topic of racism, people are always telling us how rife it is, that it is everywhere, around every corner and if you happen to be anything but white, it's coming for you. And there's no doubt that it exists. Racism has always and will always exist. It doesn't matter how many special anti-racism days we have, fuckwits will still exist. Take this for example, it happens every day. An inquest into the police shooting death of Northern Territory man Kamjuwai Walker has been told negative interactions with Indigenous Australians could lead to normalised racism within the police force. The young brother was killed during an arrest, shot. And in the trial, there were text messages released between the police that were involved that were blatantly racist text messages. Not like the racism that everyone claims all the time, like jokes and all that type of shit. This is real shit. Alleged text messages between police officers, you know, these people who are there to protect these people, calling Aboriginal people coons, the N-word. You get the idea. That's racism. They hate them because of the colour of their skin. They treat them differently. That's fucked. And would this young man have been killed if he was white? I fucking despise the idea that anyone would treat anyone differently just because of their skin colour. It's fucked. Fucked, fucked, fucked. But I would also say this. 99.9% .9 of people are not racist. And that number of 99.9%, .9%, we're talking about people who are younger than 60 years old, right? If you go a bit over 60, there might be a couple of fucking great uncles that are a bit how you're going, but under 60 years old, normal, logical human beings are not racist at all. And it makes me say this, perhaps racism isn't as bad as you think. Maybe it's all just a bit of a beat up in the media, on social media to make people scared, to divide people based on colour and politics, and for what reasons I don't know, I don't know what the, the objective of this is, maybe it's power, maybe it's control, but whatever it happens to be, it is blatant that 
People are lying to us about how much hatred there is in the world. And I imagine if you're a minority and you hear this shit and you read this shit, you think, fuck, these whiteys are out to get me. When the reality is, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. But in saying all of that, you may have heard that uh, if you're a white person, you can't have an opinion on this because you, you don't have the right amount of melanin in your skin to have a particular opinion on this because apparently that's a thing. And this is the argument that's happening through the UK right now, which has a large minority population, right? There's a lot of people there who are not white. And if you dare comment on racism in the UK and you're not black or you're not brown, then you're not heard. But I just... It Have does... you ever experienced racism? Sorry? Have you ever experienced racism? Have I? Um, no, I don't believe I have. It's kind of but, interesting that but, you're, you're but trying to t sorry, tell but, this to a black person but, in this country. Um, it's not a question of telling... And that we're centering your feelings. Sorry, just... So I guess this lady believes that if your skin colour is not the correct skin colour, then you cannot comment or, or even converse about this topic. Particularly if you slightly disagree with it. Right? And sure, don't get me wrong, if you have first-hand experience, then you definitely can have a more, have a stronger opinion than others. But maybe also in saying that, it's more of an emotional opinion, it's more anger, maybe it's not logic-based. So maybe the best people to talk about racism is white people. All I'm saying is our skin colour doesn't affect our ability to think coherently. I didn't say is that you can't have an opinion on racism. Which what I, I will say is that it's a bit absurd that you're lecturing a black person. I'm not lecturing you whatsoever. About but I'm, racism. But I'm black, but, and I don't agree with you. You know what's so that? Your bread's so buttered on, you? girl. Of course oh. you're not going to say well, And if you dare to question the narrative that racism is widespread and coming for every minority, then you are shut down, regardless of your skin colour. If you're a black person and you say it's not as bad as everyone makes it out to be, you are the fucking enemy. Look at this quote right here. Listen to the quote that she said one more time. With you. you know what side so your how, bread's so buttered on, you? girl. You know where your bread is buttered. What a fucked up thing to say. This person cannot think clearly because she is being paid or, or looked after by a certain group just because she disagrees with you. That's pretty fucked up, mate. You have to play by their rules. You have to believe in their doctrine. You have to play their game. And if you don't, you are the enemy. Once again, these lies are controlled by the media, social media, traditional media, print media, all that shit. That is where this is coming from. It's coming from the, 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 the bowels of Twitter. That's where this is coming from. But they are lies. It is not true. It exists, but it's not a fucking pandemic, ladies and gentlemen. It is not. I was just in New Zealand recently, right? And if you don't live in New Zealand, you hear constantly about how much they love their Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern. Now, when I was on stage, I made a joke about her, talking mad shit about this buck tooth horse looking fuck. And the crowd loved it. Rounds of applause. They loved it. Loved it. So I asked people afterwards, I thought you guys liked her. I didn't know how that was going to go. And several people told me that, mate, this is just a lie from the media. We fucking hate her here. She hates free speech. She loves controlling people. She is not a good prime minister. But over here in Australia, you would think that the New Zealanders fucking love her. So if they're lying about that, I guarantee you they're lying about other shit as well. So I think right now, if you went to a university campus in Australia, the UK, or even over in America on a college campus, and you asked, do you think your country is racist? Without a doubt, 99.9% .9 of the people there would say yes. Absolutely. But why? Am I a racist? No. Are you? No. Are the people you hang around with on a daily basis, are your friends racist? I fucking hope not. Otherwise you shouldn't be hanging around with them. They sound like pieces of shit. My point is it's a widespread lie that everywhere you go in these Western countries that everybody hates black people and brown people. It is not fucking true. Sure, there are people that hate people based on their skin colour, but they're they're the same people that would kick their dog off, bash their wife. They're pieces of shit. The reason we believe it's everywhere is because the media is fucking full of it and politicians rely on division to get power. But also, I guess, it comes down to what is defined as racism. The text message exchange, that's what racism is, right? Treating people who you're supposed to protect differently because of the colour of their skin. That's racist. I tell you what's not racist. This. We cannot escape, we cannot come out. Mama, we're trapping at this bumper to Ross. Look here, murder. That's a little girl staring at some people who happen to be black. That's not racism. That's a girl staring.
whenever you can go out into the rain, do not miss the opportunity! <laughs> That's Drew fucking Barrymore frolicking in the rain. That's it. That's all she's doing. And that was deemed by TikTok as supreme racism. OMG, this is so racist. Also, like, I like the fact that there's birds on her dress that could also live in her hair. Oh. I think that's fun. 200,000 people like that. Millions of people watch that. They all claim racism. Everything's racist. Dreadlocks on white people. Racist. Jokes are racist. Costumes are racist. And of course, look at this. Burgers are racist. Of course we think we live in a society that is supremely racist because everything's fucking deemed as racism. Just calm down. I said that this girl is naturally intelligent, gorgeous, generous, exemplary, and radiant. And the first letter of all of those words spells out the word Okay, maybe that was a bit racist. That's not good. The bad, 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 bad. And then, of course, there are the things that if white people do them, they are racist. But if anyone else does them, they're not racist. Drop a hot take. Okay. Racial preference is racist. I was recently dating a guy and he expressed very aggressively that he would not have intercourse with a black woman because of their hair and skin. Okay, yeah, so that sounds quite racist, right? That sounds pretty racist. And, and people were mad in the comments, and rightfully so, sounds racist, right? I mean, we should be able to have preference, but that just sounds weird the way they framed the whole answer to that question. But in the same day, when I was scrolling through the TikToks, I saw a black woman on there talking about how important black, pure blackness is to her, and she'd never sleep with a white man because she wants her baby to be pure black. They're saying the same thing. She wanted, and I quote, pure black blood. Now, if that was any other race saying that, it would be fucked up, right? But no, the comments were extremely positive. Um, do you have white privilege? I believe everybody at Georgetown definitely does that is white. 100%, absolutely. Absolutely, I think the fact that I don't need to think about my race, just going about my daily life is a sign of white privilege. Um, if we're white, subliminally, we have privilege over other minorities. Yes. This white privilege shit as well. People are taught at a young age, and this is at a college or a university in America, that they are to blame for what is happening in the world. White privilege is their original sin, something they cannot control, but they always have it and they should be ashamed of it, but they can't do anything about it because they'll always have it and they should be ashamed of it anyway. It is only exacerbated by people who are fame whores chasing social media clout by attacking white people as well. Racism isn't defeated by racism. Reverse racism isn't a thing either. It's just plain racism. Racism isn't defeated by shifting hatred to somebody else. It's defeated by stamping it out. That's the only way. It exists on a minute level. But if we run around screaming and carrying on like it's everywhere, coming to get you, we're never going to move past it. I really wish we had a world where we could move past it, but when we act like it's everywhere around every corner, coming for people who happen to be a certain skin tone or colour, then we're fucked. We are fucked. And that is the world we're living in right now, where everybody's a victim, white people are to blame, men are to blame, straight people are to blame, let's blame everybody else. What a shit fucking fight it is. It's all just the enemy of the people at the end of the day. It's all the enemy of the people. All of this shit. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below and come and see me live, ladies and gentlemen. Be a good motherfucker. Peace. The Middle East with extincts. To the au revoir. Bye bye. Like I've encountered both types of feminism, the old school feminists and the new school, right? In fact, I had this one lady, uh, she would have been, I don't know, maybe 70 years old. Old school sort of feminist. I opened a door for her, right? She walked through the door and you'll never guess what she said to me. She said, thanks. Right? <laughs> I did the same thing for a young chick recently here, right? And I opened the door, chivalry and all that shit, yeah? And I, I should have fucking known, she had a fringe to there. Uh, <laughs> this 21 year old, gorgeous thing, she walked through the door, she looked at me, she went, ah, you misogynistic piece of shit, and she scattered away. <laughs> I was standing there thinking to myself, what have I done? All I did was open the door for this young lady and this is how she treats me? Like, don't get me wrong, I was naked with a huge erection at the time, but... <laughs> <laughs>